Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionellus. Welcome back to my chemistry quick review playlist. In the previous videos, we talked about atomic theory, atomic number, atomic mass, the periodic table, periodic trends, diatomic elements, electron shells, electron subshells, and electron orbitals. As for today, it's a matter of definition. What is Pauli's principle? How about Aufbau principle? Hund's rule and octet rule. What does the word octa mean? It means eight. Please watch the videos in this chemistry playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Let's go. Let's start by the octet rule. Octet means octa, eight. Each atom aspires to have eight electrons. So the goal is to reach eight electrons in my outer or valence shell. Let's look at this periodic table for instance. Here is fluorine. How many electrons in the outermost shell? Seven. Okay, seven and I am aspiring to the octet. I want to have eight valence electrons. So fluorine will tend to gain an electron so that it becometh like neon with eight electrons in the valence shell, octet. Conversely, look at potassium. How many electrons in the outermost shell? Answer, one. So potassium will tend to lose this one electron so that it becometh like argon. And when it loses an electron, it becomes a positive one ion. But look at these noble gases in group number 18. They satisfy the octet rule. They are satisfied and stable, and that's why they are the least reactive. They tend not to participate in chemical reactions. Chemical reactions? That's beneath me. That's for the peasants. I am a noble element. That's some chemical snobbery action going. So each atom aspires to have eight electrons in the valence shell. Why? Because this is the most stable state. What do you mean? I mean lower energy, which means more stable. Go back to video number one when we talked about entropy. Nature loves low energy states. Why? Because they are more stable and they are easier to maintain. Just remember, octa means eight, as in octagon. Do we have exceptions to the octet rule? Of course. Look at hydrogen. It has one valence electron and it aspires to have two. So this is not octet, this is duplet. How about helium? Helium has two valence electrons and it's happy with the two valence electrons. How about beryllium? Beryllium has four electrons in total, two in the inner shell and two in the outer or valence shell. And beryllium is happy with the two electrons. That's a duplet rule, not octet. How about boron? Boron is a moron. I mean, it's just weird. It has three valence electrons and it's happy with them. Next, Pauli's exclusion principle. Look, you live in a country. Inside that country, you live in a state or a province. Inside that state, you live on a street. And then you have a name. There shall be no two persons who share the same identical four criteria. Yes, many people live in your country, many people live in your state, many people live on your street, but inside your house, there is only you. For example, Sarah Adam Smith. There shall be no two Sarah Adam Smiths in your household, only one. So this is like your identifier. You have four criteria, i.e. four quantum numbers, and no two electrons occupy the same four quantum numbers. If you ever meet two electrons walking around, they will have different quantum numbers, because that's how we identify electrons. Why is that? Because the principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, and the magnetic quantum number are fixed for a given orbital. And then let's look at the spin. Even the two electrons in that orbital have different spin. That's why there are no two electrons that share the same four quantum numbers. C'est impossible. Impossible. Pauli's principle. Coming up next, Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. Electrons can occupy orbitals of equal energy, i.e. with identical spin quantum numbers, one at a time before they pair up with opposite spins. Let me translate this nonsense into English. Suppose that you have three electrons and you have three orbitals. Should you go one, and then you leave the space empty, two, and then you leave the space empty, put the third electron here and leave the third space empty, or should you go one, two, and finish this one, and then go to the next? The answer is the first one. This is appropriate. This is inappropriate. Thou shall add these electrons one at a time first. Then you pair them up. So I go one, two, three. If you give me a fourth electron, I'll put fourth here. How about a fifth? 
I'll put it here. Sixth, I put it here. Why same thing? This is lower energy, i.e. more stable, i.e. easier to maintain. Mnemonic time, Hun's rule. Be patient, have patience. Take it easy, one at a time before you pair them up. Next, off-bow principle. Electrons ought to fill the lowest energy orbitals first. So, the first electron is gonna go here. How about the second electron? Should I go like here? No, 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 nope, that's not off-bow's rule. You should go to the lowest energy first. Okay, now you have filled the first shell, you can go to the second shell. The second shell can occupy a maximum of eight electrons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After you fill it, you're allowed to go to the third. Electrons ought to fill the lowest energy orbital available first. Then, after you fill the lower, you shall go to the higher. More stable, easier to maintain. Mnemonic time, off bow. The A is ought to. The F, fill. And bow, the low. So, off bow ought to fill the low first. And if you have watched my previous video, I've told you about the order of energy. We fill 1s before 2s because 1s is lower energy than 2s. We fill 2s before 2p because 2s is lower energy than 2p. We fill 4s before 3d because 4s is lower energy. By the way, you can download these doozy notes in PDF files at medicosisperfectionatus.com. Let me help you by answering the question of the previous video. What's the electron configuration for the following neutral atoms? Please pause and try to answer them yourself. What's the first order of business? My crazy mnemonic. S, S, PES, PES, DPS, DPS, F, DPS, as in F me. You gotta end up with the F gotta end up on a high note. So let's go sodium. How many electrons does the neutral atom of sodium have? Answer, 11. So I need to fill up 11 electrons. Follow the mnemonic, SS. So 1S2, 2S2. After you finish SS, you go PS, PS, all right? 2P6, and then 3S1. Let's add all of them. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Bingo. Magnesium is next. So look at this. 3S1 becomes 3S2. Everything before it is the same. Third, aluminum, 13. So I finish this. S can only take a maximum of 2. It cannot have 3 electrons. So therefore, we have to add 1. Look at the mnemonic. S, S, thank you. Pass, pass. I'm done with the first pass, and then this P right here. After this, uh, I go to silicon. All right, a P can take up to six electrons, so I add the second electron here. How about phosphorus? The third electron here. So, sodium electron configurations. If you just want the shells, well, we have 11. The first shell, one. Second shell will take eight, and the third shell will take the last one. The maximum number of electrons allowed per shell can be determined via this rule. Two n squared. n is the number of the shell. It's also the number of the period in the periodic table. The last shell that I used was n equals three. Look at your periodic table. Sodium is in the third row or the third period. If you put this n as one, you'll find that two times one squared equals two. That's why the maximum of two electrons are allowed here. And then put that two instead of the n. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. The maximum number of electrons in the second shell is 8. Put 3. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. The maximum number of electrons allowed here is 18. Let's do it by subshells instead of shells. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And here is how you put the electrons. I'm done with this, I'm done with this. Here, how do you put the six electrons? 1, 2, 3. And then you start pairing them up. Four, five, six. And this is called what? Hund's rule. Hund, have patience. One, one, one. Then you pair them up. They have to have an opposite spin. Clockwise and counterclockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Otherwise, they will repel one another because both electrons are negatively charged. Or I can write sodium electron configuration like this. Sodium is very close to what? Neon. Neon is octet. It is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 
So I can replace all of this by neon configuration, followed by 3s1. And here is your question of the day. What's the electron configuration of the following neutral atoms? S, C, L, A, R, K, and C, A. Let me know your answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer key in the next video. If you find my videos helpful, please consider buying me a coffee. Thank you so much in advance. To access my premium videos, click the join button, choose the highest tier to get access to more than 300 of them. Please subscribe, smash like, and hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my notes, courses, cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.